Hi, it's Andrew from Plainfield Public Library here. I thought I'd make a quick film about how easy it is to respond to the census online. The census is really important because it's how the nation decides how it's going to apportion its resources to the people. It needs to find out where people live so it can find out how much of the resources to apportion to each area where people are. That's why it's really important that people in Plainfield respond to the census so that Plainfield can get its fair share. That's going to be difficult because of the coronavirus and because that means it's harder for the census takers to get out and go to people's homes. So more than ever, it's very, very important that we try to respond ourselves. There are a couple of ways that we can do this. Most people got some post from the census. There was a form in there and we can fill out the form and send it back to the census for free. That's one way. We can also respond online. That's what this URL is here, the 2020census.gov URL. We can go there and, can re and we can respond online. We'll look at that in more detail in a second. Another way is that we can actually just respond over the phone. We can phone up someone actually at the Census Bureau and speak with them. This is the number that you'd call for that. When you call that number, you get an option of talking to someone in the language of your choice. That could be English or Spanish or a whole number of other languages. That way you can talk to someone in a language that's most comfortable for you and you can respond to the census that way and they can talk to you and talk you through it. Okay, so much for that. What we're going to do is look at how you could respond online and to do that we're going to enter in this URL 2020census.gov that goes into the address bar of our web browser so our web browser is something like Chrome or Firefox or Microsoft Edge or something like that. When we do that, we'll go to the page 2020census.gov. It looks like this. This is it in English. It says shape your future, start here. Once we go there, we actually have a couple of different options as far as language. Up here in the top right corner, it currently says English, but I could change it to Spanish and see it in Spanish. or a number of other languages as well. In fact, it looks like it's available in 50 odd languages. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at English just now. So, I can respond by saying, respond, right here. Let's do that. It says, welcome to the 2020 census, and it has some information about how quick and easy it is, how safe it is, what the census is for, etc. This is kind of important here. You must complete your questionnaire once you begin. If you leave the questionnaire and return later, you'll have to start over. It doesn't mean that you can't start over. It just means that if you want to finish it, you'll have to finish it. You can't come back to it later. If you come back to it later, you'll have to start again. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to start the questionnaire. The first thing it asks for is for you to log in. And it's asking for this 12-digit census ID. Well, what if you don't have that? I don't have it because I moved quite recently and the form I was supposed to get for it got lost somewhere in the moving process. So I don't have that. All it really does though is tell the census where the response is coming from. Which address, which apartment, which street, which street number. So I can actually enter that in myself. But if I had my 12 digit census ID, it would be a very accurate way of telling the Census Bureau exactly where the response was coming from. Since I don't have it, I'm just going to click on here. It means it's going to ask me some questions about where the response is coming from. Because I'm in a US state, I'm going to click this one. If I was in Puerto Rico or somewhere else, I'd click those. But let's just do this for now. Okay, I've selected a US state and I'm going to click next. Here's the part where I would put in my address. I'm going to try using the library's address and see if that gets me very far. 800 Park Avenue, Plainfield, New Jersey, 07060. Okay, now we'll hit next. Please review your address. Here's the address you submitted using standard abbreviations and formatting. If the address is correct, 
Select Submit. OK. That looks right. If it was wrong, I could revise it and make it right. By the way, I'm not actually going to submit this in the end because nobody really lives at the, at the library. Um, it's just a way for me to use an address that will work. OK. I'm just going to submit the address for now, though. OK. What is my name and telephone number? We will only contact you if needed for official census business. Sounds OK. All right. I'm going to use a fake name. Andrew John Oops. Smith. That's not my real name. But anyway. Uh, 973-911. Uh, one, two, three, four. I made that up too, but you can put in your telephone number. Okay, let's carry on from there. Okay, we're now at the stage where it's going to start asking questions about who lives in our household. Including yourself, how many people were living or staying at 800 Park Avenue on April 1st, 2020? So I'm going to say that it was two. One of them is going to be me but the other one is going to be the other person that I live with. OK, let's click Next now. What is the name of each person who is living or staying at 800 Park Avenue on April 1st? OK, so it already has me. I live there. So let's list the other person that lives there. I'm going to make up a name. OK, so that's the other person that lives there. If I need to add more people, I can add another person like this, and I can see that there's areas to put their names in. If by chance I've added too many, I can remove them again. OK, I've added all the people I need to, to add, so I'm going to move on to the next stage. They're going to ask a question here. We don't want to miss anyone who might have stayed at Park Avenue. So there might be children, relatives, roommates, or people without a permanent place to live. So was there anybody else on April the 1st that was staying with you at your address? If there was, you can go back and you can add them by clicking yes. Or if there weren't, you can go ahead and click no. You need to click one or the other to move on. I'm going to click no for now because I know that there were just the two of us. OK, let's click on the next. It wants to know about what kind of place this house or apartment or mobile home actually is. Do we own it? Is someone uh, paying a mortgage, or are they free and clear, or is it rented, or is it occupied without payment of rent? We'll just check one of them. I'm going to go for rented. There we go. And I'm going to click Next. All right. Now it's going to ask, of all the people who lived at 800 Park, who rented it? Select all that apply. Well, we both contribute to the rent on that one, so I'm going to click both of us. Or Maybe if my parents paid the rent, I would uncheck those, and I would click that. But I'm just going to check these two. OK, what's next? That's the household questions. Now it's going to ask some people questions about the people. So we've got the two people here. There's me, and there's Betty. So I need to know the details about both of these people in order to answer the questions. Let's start with me. OK, so you can see the first question it asks is about my gender, and it actually only gives us two choices here, male and female. I don't have to put here what it says on any other paperwork about me. If I want to put male, I can put male. If I want to put female, I can put female. Unfortunately, there aren't any other options on this, but I can choose which one of these I think closest approximates to how I identify. So in my case, I'm going to put male. What is the date of birth? Let's put in the date of birth. Oops. OK. So that means that this person was born on the 16th of June, 1979. All right. Let's click on the next. Now it's going to ask some questions about my race. Is Andrew Smith of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? So I can check these according to what's correct for me. For me, it's not true to say that I'm Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish. So I'm going to click No. There we go. I've checked that one for me, and I'm going to go into the next part for me. 
OK. As it happens, Andrew G. Smith is white. So we're going to put white and, well, it's true to say that I'm Scottish. So let's say that. All right, there we go. And there are the other options that I can check as well. So you would just check whatever you think most closely describes yourself. OK. Let's move on to the next section. OK. I've finished answering the questions for me. I'm going to answer the questions for Betty now. Or Betty can get into the chair and can answer her own questions. But it's all going to go on the same form. Let's start with Betty's questions. All right. What's my relationship to Betty? Uh, let's say that Betty is the opposite sex unmarried partner. Let's try that. OK, I've selected that. And having done so, I can click Next. But if there was another relationship, I can completely just choose another one. Or if it's hard to describe, we can just say other non-relative. OK, let's click Next now. Again, there's just the two options for gender here. So here, I'm going to just check female. OK. We're going to put in Betty's date of birth. Oops, wrong one. All right. OK, Betty's 32. Let's click Next. OK, now it's time to answer some questions about Betty's race. There are a number of different boxes she could check for that. It's saying, is Betty of Hispanic, Latino or Spanish origin? Well, as a matter of fact, Betty's from Dominican Republic, so she's going to check one of these. She's going to say, yes, another Hispanic, Latino or Spanish origin. And actually, one of the examples given here is Dominican. So that's what she's going to enter. OK, so I type that in and I check that one. Now I'm ready to go on to the next bit. OK. Just because Betty said that she's from uh, the Dominican Republic, it hasn't made any assumptions about what Betty's race actually is. So there are a number of boxes that she has a choice of here. As it happens, Betty identifies as black. So we'll check that. And she's going to say Dominican again. But she could just as well write any of the other options, whatever actually is correct for her. OK, now that we filled that out, we're going to click Next. All right, so I've answered questions about me, and I've answered questions about Betty. If there were other people, I'd answer the questions about them as well. Now there are some final questions. Let's click on those. We'd like to make sure that everyone is only counted once. Some people live or stay in more than one place. For example, with a grandparent, well attending college, military assignment, closer for a job or business, etc, etc. So it's asking, do we live in other places as well? Well, as a matter of fact, we don't live anywhere else. So we're not going to select any of these because none of us actually live anywhere else. So I'm going to check this box that says none of the above. So I'm answering, do any of the following people usually live or stay somewhere else? None of the above. The answer is no. Let's move on. OK. You're almost finished and are now ready to send your responses. Once your questionnaire is submitted, you'll not be able to access your information or change any of your responses. So this is it. After you submit your responses and are shown the confirmation page, you may close the web browser. You must select Submit to complete your questionnaire. Would you like to send your responses now? So this is asking me, am I finished? Do I want to submit my questionnaire to the Census Bureau? So if I got all the answers that I wanted to put in there and got them like I want them to be, I would go ahead and click this Submit Questionnaire button right, right now. I'm not going to do that because I made those people and that address up. So it's not real. But if you've entered in your details and you're ready to submit it, you just click the Submit Questionnaire button right there and you'll get some confirmation that you've sent it into the census. And that's really all you have to do. It's not very hard. 
You just have to fill out a few details for the people that you live with. And that's it. Thanks.